this, and then I have to put this, make sure that's there, and now we're going. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you see how there's that green line around the whole screen? You probably maybe you can't see it, but it's on there. All right. Let's see how we're doing on this. I maybe should have put none of the above and you came up with the most creative answer. <laughs> Only 20? Usually we're like 20 something. Do you think it's the weather? Do you think homecoming did them in? Do you think it's the fact they didn't get it? <laughs> they don't know their test grades, so I can't blame it on the test grades. It's too cold. I don't know how to go to work. <laughs> I got 19 up there. Is there one more? Woohoo! Maybe. Okay, so let's evaluate the question. I feel like that is needed. All right, so what happens in this reaction? We have an alkane and we have Br2, and what's that? Light. Okay, all right, so what is gonna occur in the reaction? Then we'll worry about where it's gonna occur. Substitution, substitution. we're gonna substitute what? That's a U. Substitute a, a bromine for a hydrogen, okay? Not a carbon, a hydrogen. So what does that rule out? If you look at the little answers, that rules out E. That rules out B. Because what happened here? People just threw them up a group away. We're not doing that. Okay, don't throw them away. They're still there. You should have the same number of carbons in your answer that you have in your start. Okay? Okay, now what else can you tell me about bromination? Anything else? We talked a lot about it last time. Okay, let me ask you this question then. How many possible products do you think there are for that? How many possible? How many possible? You ready? There's five possibilities, okay? Let's find them all, okay? One, two, three, four, five. You see the symmetry in the ring, that the ring is symmetrical. These two carbons would give you the same product, and substituting off a of hydrogen off these two carbons would give you the same product. But it's different than this one. So if you need to, write out every one of them so that you see that these two are the same and these two are the same. Okay, so there's five possibilities. Which one is right? What is bromine specific for? What kind of hydrogen? Hmm? Oh boy. You slept since Friday? Is that what you're telling me? No, <laughs> Okay, which one is the right answer? Why was it not A? It wasn't A because this is a primary carbon. This is a secondary carbon. This is a tertiary but carbon. Could it have been A? It just like D's more right. 
it's the major. <laughs> he is correct. I know, but <laughs> okay. I mean, it's not more right. Oh, okay. okay. Remember, there's five possibilities up here. Oh, okay. That's what I mean. Like, it's a possibility. It is a possibility. It's just not the best. Oh, okay. Okay. Because remember the difference between bromination and chlorination. Chlorination was. Very reactive and not selective. Bromination was selective, but not as reactive. Okay, that's part of why it was selective. Okay, so bromine loves tertiary hydrogen. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna do the mechanism for that whole thing that we just did in that um clicker question we're going to do the whole mechanism with bromine okay so our uh, mechanism is going to be for this reaction okay i'm going to write in this hydrogen why do you think i'm writing it in so you don't forget it and because that's the one that's going to get removed because that's the one that we're swapping for. So here is our product. Okay, so that's where we're going. Now, one thing to tell you, it isn't a big deal yet, but it will be shortly, is that this reaction is a free radical mechanism. And how do you know that? This is your clue right here. H nu is the clue. When you see H nu, that means it's a free radical reaction. Okay, yes, you can have heat, heat or H nu, but usually H nu, like 99.999% of the time I see it written, it's going to be, they're going to write H nu. Okay, that tells you that it's free radical. And you're going to do the steps like this. We're going to do other mechanisms that aren't free radical. And what always happens is because we do free radical first, people want to make every reaction free radical. It doesn't work well. Praise the Lord, actually because you don't want them all that way. All right, so what is the first step? What kind of step do we have first? Hmm? Yeah, if this is gonna parallel exactly what we did with the chlorination of methane a couple days ago. Okay, maybe a week ago. Did we do that on Monday last week? Okay, so it's going to parallel that, except we're going to do it with bromine, and we're going to do it with that tertiary hydrogen. Okay? All right, so do you remember what happened in the chlorination? What did we do? We took the two chlorines, and what did we do? We broke them apart, right? We're going to do that with the bromine. So we're going to have Br... Br okay, I'm going to write in all the electrons so that there isn't any problems. Okay, this will only happen with the light. Okay, if you don't have the light, if this is sitting in the dark in your drawer in the lab, you're not going to get any reaction. Okay, all right, so now what are we going to do? We're going to take this bond. Every bond contains how many electrons? Two. And we're going to put one electron on this bromine and one on this. And it doesn't matter if you draw it like that, like a fountain or like that. It's so long as one goes to each. Now, what kind of arrows did I use? Half arrows. Because that signifies movement of one electron. Okay? All right. So what do I get now? I get a Br, okay, and what happened to it? This bromine now has a free electron. And how many of those did I get? I happened to get two, okay? 
And that is what's going to start the whole chain reaction. Okay, remember that this is a free radical chain reaction. Okay, what was the next kind of steps after initiation? What do we do? There was another word for it. Propagation. Here's where we're going to do the real thing. We're going to make our stuff. Okay, so we're going to start with, we have to have that bromine free radical. So here's a bromine free radical. Okay. And we have our organic molecule. Okay, so do you remember what happens? What did the chlorine free radical do? What did it do? It's going to do the same thing, only it's bromine doing it. Okay, and which hydrogen is it going to pick? There's five, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 hydrogens up there. Which one do we pick? The one that's tertiary. Okay, and so it's going to remove that hydrogen. Remember, it takes two electrons to make a bond. So it's going to abstract the hydrogen. I'll write that down here. Hydrogen abstraction. Okay, but wait a minute. What happens to the other electron in the CH bond over here? Remember, there's two, it goes to the carbon. Okay, so what do you have now? You have write what didn't change. You still have a ring, you still have that ethyl group on it. Okay, what do you have on this carbon right here? An electron. Okay. You made a free radical. What happened to the other electrons? What else did you make? You have an H bonded to a Br. Okay, that's my free. I, I made it big. All right, do you see how these little half arrows and you end up with this? Hmm? That's the hardest part right there. Okay, because the bromine and one of these electrons go with the hydrogen and make the HBr bond, and the other electron stays and becomes a free radical. Okay? All right, now hang on. We're gonna, I'm gonna make it fit. All right, so now what do I have? Remember that in propagation, you start with a free radical and you make a new free radical in each step. Okay, so now I'm going to start with my free radical that I made, which is this one. Okay, and notice what kind of free radical it is. I didn't say that earlier. What kind is it? Classify it. It's tertiary. Yeah, okay. That's right, just write down. You'll, you, you'll understand what I mean as I, as I keep asking those questions. All right, now, what does that do? Well, the logical thing you might think is, oh, it finds the other free radical. They come together and they make our product. But that's not what happens, okay? Because what happened to the other bromine free radical? It did this. Okay, so when you do this reaction, every bromine in the reaction mixture does not pop apart and make bromine free radicals at the exact same time. Okay, a couple of them get enough energy and they do it, and that gets the chain started. Okay, so remember this is a free radical chain mechanism. We're going to have a little repeating thing here. 
Okay, so what's still in there? Well, there's a whole lot of bromine in there because not all of it busted apart and became free radicals. The percent is very small at any given time. I'm putting all my electrons on my bromines. Okay, so now the free radical that we made, that's the carbon tertiary free radical, well, it takes how many electrons to make a bond? Two. So there's one. Where's the other one come from? Over here. And then what happens with this bond? What happens to the other electron in it? It goes to the other bromine. That's still a part of propagation. Yep. No, that's still part of propagation. Propagation in this reaction is two steps. All right. So what do I have now? So here's my part that didn't change. So now I made a bond from the tertiary carbon to a bromine. Okay. Okay, and then what else did I make? I made a bromine free radical. Okay, now what does that bromine free radical do? What does this do? It goes back and does this. It abstracts a hydrogen from another starting material of ethyl cyclopentane, okay? And this thing is a chain. See how we're just keeping it going, okay? This gets it started, propagation keeps it going. Okay, and this is where, oh, I still have a pen. All your product almost is formed. Okay, almost all your product is formed that way. Okay, are you with me? Are you following the little half arrows? Remember, it takes two electrons to make a bond, and we have to do one half arrow and one half arrow. Those are the two that make a bond. Okay. And you have to account for the other one in the bond that breaks. Okay, that's all that's in this reaction mixture. There might be some solvent, but we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so what were the last kind of steps? Termination. Yep. Remember that these steps occur after almost everything is used up. These compounds are formed in very small amounts, okay? The, the one bromo, one ethyl cyclopentane, that is your main product and it is formed in propagation, okay? All right, so what do we do in termination? We take two free radicals and they come together because there's like nothing left of them. Okay, so we do all the possibilities. So what are all the possibilities? What are the free radicals that are formed in our reaction mixture? Well, give me one. The bromine, right? Okay, what else? Yeah, the free radical off the carbon. So what are our possibilities gonna be? A bromine plus a bromine. Okay, what else? A bromine plus a the carbon one. And what else? The carbon one plus the carbon one. So do you see it's just basically all the possibilities? Okay, so the first one you said was a bromine plus a bromine. Okay, so there's my two bromine free radicals, and I'm going to terminate the chain. That means that there isn't going to be any free radicals after I'm done. So this one and this one are going to do what? Make a bond. Okay, so we're going to get a bond between our two bromines. Okay, what would be the next one? The carbon 
free radical plus, plus the bromine. Okay, so we're going to, this electron and one of those. Okay, the free radicals coming together. So what do you get? You get what looks like product. Just remember that you don't get very much of it formed this way. It's really low. And in a minute, I'll talk about how they know that. Okay, now what is the last one? The carbon to the carbon. So you're going to have the carbon free radical plus another one so i'm going to flip it so that the electrons are on the same it'd be easier to draw it okay you see what i did i just flipped it over to make it easier to draw okay so i'm going to take this electron and this electron and i'm going to make a Bond. Okay, you try to draw it and then I'll draw it. Let's see if you can do it. I'll never see your paper, so if you put a big X in it, it'll be okay. Okay, so you give it a go and try to draw that. Remember what we're doing. We're making a what? Bond. Give it a go. See how you're doing. See if you're awake today. I'll give you a clue. There's your clue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well, don't be drawing me a six membered ring, right? <laughs> That's right. Don't be drawing me a straight chain, right? Okay. All right, is this what you did? Draw a bond and then draw the seal. Okay, does everybody see that this is the new bond that was formed between them? I flipped it because it's easier to draw the bond. That's all. It's the same molecule. I just flipped it. It doesn't matter if you draw your ethyls up or down because you can rotate around that bond. So it wouldn't matter. There's going to be numerous ways that you can draw that. Okay. But this is not the way to draw it. This is the most common wrong answer I get for these kind of things. Okay. Because, okay, so what does that bug look like? It has how many bonds? Whoops, I didn't know I could do that with the, with the pen on. The things you learn. Okay, how many bonds are there? Six. Yeah, too many. Okay, so just give them eyes and we go. Okay. Make sure you understand that you're making a bond, okay? The carbons aren't becoming one carbon. You're making a bond between them. That will help tremendously, okay? And if you drew this with the ethyl down and this ethyl up, that's okay. But just make sure you have a bond, okay? We won't worry about how to name that. All right, now, what they did is they did a bunch of studies. Okay, and they analyzed the reaction mixtures, and these things were found in there. Okay, these dye things, and they took and they used bromine that were two different isotopes. So, bromine up there is it at 79.9? Yeah, I think that 79 
and then they used bromine that was 81. Okay, so those were the two, and at the end, they found this formed that was scrambled. Okay, so they had a mix of all the isotopes. That's how they know that this is really happening. Okay, because they did these studies. And uh, they find this, but they don't find it in a whole lot. They find a small amount of it. Okay, whatever the dye compound would be with two organic compounds together. Okay, you got it? How do you feel? Yes, no, maybe so? Yeah, okay. Um, I recommend that you practice it, uh, maybe even on some other compounds. You don't have to hiccup though. Okay, so have you heard of something called um, this compound or this one? This is ascorbic acid. You heard of ascorbic acid? It's also known as what? You know that? Vitamin C. Ascorbic acid is also known as vitamin C. If you uh, buy something that has vitamin C added to it, you look in the label, sometimes it'll list ascorbic acid as an ingredient because that's what they added. Okay, and then there's this lovely thing, TBHQ. Um, you see where it got the TB from? It's that tertiary butyl is on there, and it's got a benzene ring on it, okay? Tertiary butyl hydroquinone. Well, what those things are is they're added to chemicals in order to prevent or retard free radical reactions. They are free radical scavengers. That's why vitamin C is good for you to eat. Vitamin C is also highly water soluble. Do you see how it can hydrogen bond like all over the place? Okay, so ascorbic acid is really water soluble. It's one of the vitamins that sometimes people take in big doses if they feel a cold coming on, they take extra. It's okay to do that because you will pee it out. Okay, because it's water soluble. That's how you get rid of it. Okay, there are some vitamins that you shouldn't take in excess. Um, I can't tell you the letters right off the top of my head, but they're fat soluble. I'm sure that's gonna come up later. They're fat soluble and those don't, your body doesn't get rid of very easily. So you have to be careful, okay? And don't take mega doses of some of those, okay? There was a guy uh, named Paul, uh, Linus Pauling. Have you heard of him? You should have. You heard of the Pauling exclusion principle? Has to do with the electrons filling, how they fill one in each and then they double up. Okay, that was from Linus Pauling. In his later years, he got into vitamin C and was would take mega doses of vitamin C. I should look up how old he was when he died, just so we know. <laughs> that really helped. Okay, so what these do is they retard um, spoilage. Okay, they also help free radical scavenge in your body. That's what lycopene and lycopene is in tomato paste. I'm going to show you that later on. Blueberries, cranberries, all those things are really good for free radical scavengers. Okay, the free radicals will react with your um, DNA, and that's how a lot of how a lot of cancers get started is by free radicals. Okay, that's why you shouldn't be in the sun too much because what does that UV light do? Yeah, it makes those electrons go where they're not supposed to go and you get uh, free radicals for it, okay? Your, um, the ch there's a chain reaction happening in the food. And so what these things do is they stop that and they get in there and they break it up by grabbing out a free radical and stopping that chain reaction from going. And so that's how it stops uh, spoilage of the food, okay? So when your food spoils next time and you take, you have to throw it out from the refrigerator, all oh, those darn free radicals, it got my food again, okay? What? Oh, you looked it up? He was 93, so he made it to his 90s, that's pretty good. Okay, 
BHA stops oxidation by reacting with radical intermediates to form a relatively stable free radical intermediate. So here is the BHA from the other slide. And these are some free radicals, okay? And so what will happen is it will become a free radical, okay? Notice what those free radicals are doing. They're abstracting a hydrogen from that OH. Here, let me do this so I can circle it up. Okay, and so you end up getting this free radical, which is stabilized by this whole little ring thing, okay? And then a second one is pulling off the methyl. I'm not worried about you knowing this. I just want you to see how what we just did relates to this. Okay? Are you okay? Okay? Okay. Vitamin E reacts similarly to BHA. Here's vitamin E. There's its little structure. And um, vitamin C, here's your ascorbic acid, just drawn a little different. And once again, we are abstracting a hydrogen, and you'll notice this one took this one. Okay? And then that gets stabilized through the ring system. Those rings can do some resonance, right? Okay, we're going to do some resonance in a little bit. Okay? Okay, we talked about one of the problems with chlorination was that the chlorine took all of the hydrogens. It wasn't selective. So you were going to get all the possibilities, just pull your hair out, and then you have to separate them, okay? But chlorine is so reactive that it will not only do that, but it will add multiple times to your starting materials. So if you we're making methyl chloride, okay, this one, from um, methane plus Cl2 to get this, okay? Then what happens is that methyl chloride can react with another chlorine to make this compound, which is called methylene chloride. Have you seen that in life? Methylene chloride? Yes. yes. Okay, because I'm sure you've used it like five times. Okay, so methylene chloride can react with another chlorine. And what will that make? If methylene chloride reacts with another chlorine, What will you get? Hmm? CHCl3, right? Plus HCl. Okay, you get chloroform, and chloroform can react with another chlorine to give you what's called carbon tetrafluoride. So you can get all of them, and this can happen even with bigger molecules than methane. So you see how after you substitute one chlorine, if you put a second chlorine in, what happens? Oh my gosh, there's like a billion possibilities. And separating them gets to be really tough. And that's another reason why we don't like to use this reaction with chlorine. It works, but we don't like it because it's hard to get your products afterwards. Because you don't want all the products together, you want them separated, okay? Um, one way that they tried to get around it was they said, okay, let's use a whole bunch of the organic starting material, like a buttload of it, so that the chlorine's chance of finding one of those to react with is much higher than finding one that already has a chlorine on it, okay? And then um, at the end, you can have, let's see, let me give you a... Okay, now I want to do this. So here's a compound. What is that? Cyclopentane. I'm just checking on it. All right, I'm going to react it with chlorine. Okay. How many possible products are there for monochlorination? One. 
How many? There's just one, right? Do you agree that each one of these carbons has how many hydrogens? Two. And that they are identical all the way around. It doesn't matter which one you would pick. This, I blame the, the board. Does everybody see that all those hydrogens are the same? So it wouldn't matter which one you picked, okay? But what, what are we going to do? What does this reaction do every single time? It substitutes a chlorine for a hydrogen. Okay, what's the, what's the byproduct that you get that you have to worry about? HCl. Okay, if I ask you for the organic compound, all you have to draw is that. You don't have to give me the HCl. It's a bonus if you give it to me. You won't get a bonus point, but you can be excited that you remember this. Okay, <laughs> we'll go with that. Okay, so what you would do is cyclopentane is a liquid, you would use an excess of this. Because once you make this, if it reacts with the chlorine again, here, I'll just write a Cl dot. Do you see how many possible products there are now? One, two, three. So what are the dichlorination possibilities. So what we try to do is avoid this because we're getting too many things. Okay, so you would have, here would be one. Okay, what else would be another one? Do I need to draw all the hydrogens in? Do you see that these two are gonna be the same and these two are gonna be the same? Okay. Okay, so we would have this one, we would have that one, and what is the third one? Where would the chlorine be? Over here. So you're going to get one one dichlorocyclopentane, one two dichlorocyclopentane, and one three dichlorocyclopentane. Can you get one four dichlorocyclopentane? No, no because that would be one three. Okay, so um, these are all the possibilities, and so we're trying to avoid that. So if we have a chlorination question, all I'm going to want is the monochlorinated product. But you can't predict what is going to be major. Okay, remember with chlorine, it didn't work. We thought we had it figured out and then life happened, okay? And it was not correct. All right, so I'm gonna give you, let's do a straight chain. And I'm gonna ask you, what are all the possible monochlorination products for that company? reaction. What are all the possibilities? And then you'll say, let's just do bromine. <laughs> so how many think there are? Good, you're doing better on that. Okay, if you look at this and you don't know where the hydrogens are, write that down. So sit here and do this. Write the hydrogens in. Okay, now can you draw me all of them? So I want you to draw me all of them. I'm gonna get out of red. Okay. All right, here's your clue. So which one you wanna substitute first? Top left, this one? Okay, so what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go up and draw a chlorine, okay? Does everybody agree there's only one hydrogen on that carbon in the black molecule now? Okay, it's got, you, you could go over here and be excited that you remembered this. If that helps you keep track of all the atoms, okay? But that's one product. 
Give me another one. What else are we going to get? Bottom left. Do you mean this one or do you mean down here? That's right to me. This one? Okay, so how do I draw that one with the sticks? Huh? Do I just write a chlorine there? No, you got to draw a bond and write the chlorine. It's one of the biggest mistakes. People just write it CL and that's not really what they meant. I got to grade what you draw. I can't grade what you mean or what I wish you mean. Okay. All right. What else? There's two. Bottom right. All right. So I'm going to start with this. Okay. So how do I put one on that bottom right? You have to draw, you have to draw a bond and put your chlorine. That makes it look like there's a free radical there. There's one. Okay, there's one more. What's the other one? Right, on the tertiary hydrogen. And to be perfectly honest, I do not know which one of those is major. I'd have to go look it up and see. So I'm sure somebody did it and figured out what was major. Okay? All right, now, looky here. What if we take that exact same molecule and we do this okay now which one is major yeah all you're gonna draw is gonna be one okay and if you want in parentheses you can put plus Okay, I'm just making sure we're going to put HCl. Okay, is that making more sense today? Okay, may, maybe. So you're going to practice doing your um, your uh, free radical reactions, okay? Because I can give you all kinds of comfort. Okay, you have to see that it's free radical, and you need to see that it's gonna be a hydrogen and a bromine are switching places, or hydrogen and chlorine are switching places, okay? You can't look at every reaction, every molecule I draw up here, because truly I could draw thousands of them. You will be able to too by the end of semester, okay? And, um, and say, oh gosh, this is, um, a whole new reaction. It's not. It's really the same thing over and over. There's a pattern. And that's what we're going to do as we start delving more into mechanisms is we're going to be looking at those patterns. Okay? Now, we have talked about, here, I got to get some light. Okay, we have talked about free radicals already. Okay? We're going to talk a little more about these other three. Those other three are things that are going to be formed in other reactions. We mentioned them a long time ago. Do you remember those words? Oh my God, I'm telling you. So a carbocation, you got what on the carbon? A plus. A free radical, you got what on the carbon? An electron all by itself. A carbanion has what on the carbon? an electron pair, but what does a carbene have on it? Okay, so how are you gonna tell a carbene and a carbene apart? The carbene ion is negative. It has two, four, six, eight electrons. How many does a carbene have? Two, four, six. But notice it doesn't get a charge. What's the normal valence of carbon? Okay, how many unshared electrons are there? Two. We're sharing how many electrons? Four, half of four is? Four minus two minus two is? Just like the free radical, it's one that people want to put charges on, okay? And we'll use it, it does some fun things. All right, are you with me? Okay. We'll have some more clickers next time.
Oh, you know what it is? It's this thing. Man, I gotta remember this. It's not coping because 